All right, welcome back to Wook Plus. I am Week and Wook, joined by Kev, the Great Win. What's that smile, man? I, I, I am not gonna lie to you, because I don't lie to you. Yeah, I was trying to place what fish song that was. The first like ten seconds of it. <laughs> well, that'd be weird to play a fish song for. Uh... Yeah, that's what I was thinking, and I was like, "Oh wait, that's a goose song." Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I listen. I don't think you know. It's weird because there's so many trolls in the chat, and the reason, I'll, the way I'll tie it to tonight's show is because they chose to stream it on YouTube, which I think was a brilliant move, right? Get it out there for free, but it gives you like this weird, like dynamic in the chat and there were like all these fish fans just trolling so hard but they were there the whole show watched the entire show and were commenting but like trolling so hard and they're like this sounds like this fish song this sounds like that fish song but i was like yeah of course it's a a, a stated major influence of a majority of the band of course there's going to be influences it's just the same reason that fish has songs that sound like santana mm -hmm. or genesis or Zap, you know what I mean? Like your influences show up in your music, and I don't think especially that's especially your especially your earlier songs because you haven't matured yet as a writer, right? And developed your own thing, right? It's which it becomes an amalgamation of them all. Um, anyway, that's not why we're here. Why we're here, we're here to discuss Goose Night 2 at the Cap Cotter's second show. I'm just gonna start tracking goose shows in like BC and AC, like before Cotter and after Cotter um cotter show two i thought i was a little bit all right i'll i'll give you my overall wouldn't it, then be, I'll... A, wouldn't it be a b and a b c oh right yeah no. i guess it would have to be just BC fucked that up i had it perfect um i thought in the very beginning of this i was a little bit not locked in with it right like i just i don't know what it was if it was me personally or they're playing i was like oh it's a little bit slower I'm not feeling it. And by the end of the night, I thought it ended up being a better show. You know what I mean? Like, I think when it started, it felt like it wasn't going to live up to yesterday. And by the end, I thought it ended up being a better show. And it never slowed down. Every single song, it got better and better and better and pushed through to the end. Am I on something? Or what did you think? Um. <clears throat> well, do, do you want to talk about my question to you earlier off the top? Or do we want to look at the set list? Right? I don't remember the question. So, sure, let's do it. The question was, when you are listening, you're at the show, right? They do yeah. the third or fourth song, and you realize they played a few Moon Cabin songs in a row. Does it take away from it because you know what the second set's going to be? Yeah, I could see that taking it away if you're going in, like, wanting it to develop organically. But I think for me, and I imagine for a lot of people, there were more. there's more excitement stemming from that. For two reasons. One, it explained the slower start to the show. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if Dr. 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 Darkness here, I'll pull up the uh set list there just we since we're kind of alluding to it. I don't that's know. If that's the, a... That was the most recent song. I mean, if the vintage of this would be like 2019, probably, even yeah. with the Dr. Darkness, which is last year, I guess they started doing but that. Like, I don't know it? if that's a, a, a typical opener, but it's like a weird it's an odd opener to me. And then turned clouds. I was like, where are they going with this? I wasn't fully vibing into it. And then by Into the Mist, I was like, oh, right. Duh, Dark Moon, you right. know, Eclipse. I get it. We're themed. Yay, everybody. But Dr. Then, Darkness, I've seen in Setless as an opener before. Yeah. Um, so. But to answer your question, though, knowing that Jive and potentially the Jivefecta, as I've come to learn it, uh, was on the table, was ultimately made it way more exciting. I didn't think they were committing to the bit, though, even into set break. Like, I was like, oh, cool. They did, like, the first half of the album, and then I thought they were going to, you know, deviate from it. It wasn't until Indian River that I was like, oh, like, they're like, really they going to do this. They're strict <clears throat> on it right now, which I thought right. was cool. Dr. <clears throat> Dr. Darkness, I, I will say this. Rick, whether he's with his partner or writing alone, is better at the lyrics department than another band that we talk about all the time. And this song, Dr. Darkness, the lyric reminds me a lot of like a Tom Waits song or something. I really like the territory they're going into, even though it's only six minutes and it hasn't, it may never blossom. I like that direction of where it's pushing the band. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate the song, but I was, 
like I said, I was definitely not feeling it tonight. I I don't think it's it's a good opener. I think if anything, no, it's not an opener. No, you know, like <laughs> it, it might fit better later in the set, but you know, it is what it is. It worked enough for the theme. I think this show started for me into the mist, right? Like I think that that build up and and that was a theme again tonight, like a very very slow, patient build ups. Um, you know, not a ton of variation, not a lot of left turns and everything, right? Very patient, just in the pocket. We're going to hit these couple of chords. We're going to stick and build it up, build it up, build it up. When they built up into the mist, I was like, okay, here we go. Right. This now we're in a show. Um, we yeah, do we read the chat, it, Jay. We do read the chat. What does Jay want us to say? Jay asked if we read the chat and if we were actual goose fans. I don't know. I mean, I'm not like I don't have a mustache, and I'm not going to say every song. You have a mustache. Or, I mean, about? I mean, like the mustache only thing, man. Right. Turn clouds did not go to any territory that they haven't explored over the last few of them. You're not coming with me and skipping the into the thing. to into the mist. We want to go back, okay? Well, I was. That's all I was going to say. And then I was going to say into the mist. I, I agree with you. Was where they finally opened up in the third spot yesterday was when they opened up. So it seems like this is, you know, we'll see if it becomes a pattern. The yeah. third song in is the one that's going to go push 20, 25. What was this? 27 minutes. It was lengthy, but they don't feel, I don't know. On one way I'm so torn about, because on one hand they almost feel a lot longer because they are so locked in and, and not varying a lot, right? Like doing the slow build. But in another way, it's very like meditative and like puts you in a trance. You know what it is? I don't know what the actual musical term is, but I know that um, Chris Nolan uses it in his movies a lot. There's this musical phenomenon where by the time you chromatically build up, right? Or or you build up. It doesn't need to be chromatically, but you increase on intervals. The you know increasing the pitch, so, uh, uh, and then you subvert and you bring the next pitch down and start building up underneath it. So your ear thinks it's infinitely going up and up and up, right? Where in reality, mm. you're just repeating patterns, but they're offset. So it creates, and I noticed they did this a couple of times tonight, where it makes it feel like the entire jam is always pushing forward and always getting, you know, more and more and more and mm. never lets down. So I don't know. I think it's very cool. I, I'm very di much digging these four, five, six song sets too. I think that's right. really I, uh, solid. I, I've I found that interesting too, since they knew walking in exactly what the set list was. I don't know what their process is, whether they have it written out every night or not, but so they knew. So it's interesting what songs off the album they chose to, you know, take out there. They chose Into the Mist to take out there. I mean, they're all longer than they were on the album, but you get what I'm saying. Which one? They're like, all right, we have an hour and 10 minutes to fill. Which one of these is getting all the juice tonight? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, though, I think. Um, hmm. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> That's right, Arcadia. I, Trevor was shining. I think it was, uh, he really stepped up. Sounded good in the mix. I feel like Peter, uh, they had some issue, I guess, yesterday, and they had to remix the whole thing because Peter, there was something wrong with his feed. I felt like he was kind of quiet in the mix at certain times tonight like they were messing with it during the show at first set the mix was kind of a little more fucked up for peter but by the end i could hear peter i mean he he was one of the people that i thought i actually put that question the poll out there who the mvp was because i think it's cotter but i think that last 20 30 minutes peter definitely stepped up and was like you know MVP in a big way. Yeah, I really dug uh, Trevor's bass solo. I thought his sound was great. Um, I feel like a lot of people I saw in the chat were like, oh, uh, the mix sucks. But I think they're just listening to it on shitty speakers or on their phone because, like, through the headphones, I could hear him perfectly. And, you know, I like he has a very, like, open, almost like a, a stand up bass sound, right? Like, has a very an like, acoustic, I was going to say it has an acoustic warm feel to tone it. to it. Which I, I really appreciate. Um, and I love that song. That's one of the first songs that I really, you know, got into. And it had a lot several climaxes too, which I thought were really good. 
Um, what do you think about Lead the Way? I, um, I it's it's a very well written song. It's your standard yeah. love song. It doesn't do much for me because it doesn't speak to me. The lyric doesn't speak to me. And beyond that, it's your standard mid tempo rocker. It's it was uncomfortable to me, and I couldn't place why. But it, it felt like a an off like a slightly off kilter Beatles song that just was like a little bit uncomfortable, right? There's something in the writing that's just, and I think that's by design. I don't think that's I, like even an insult. I almost feel like it's written to make you slightly feel off. But once it got into the jam and, and it got into that really beautiful bliss that I thought was the type of bliss that I want to hear. Right. So often we just call these, you know, basic melodic major jams bliss jams right like we very that's a term we throw around a lot mm -hmm. and they're not truly blissful i thought the end of this song this jam and lead the way was like truly felt blissful like there was a bliss to the jamming right but uh, i don't know i thought it was a pretty good set i was not in love yeah. with the first set i think the second set was much better but i thought it was a pretty good set the the, the cool thing about watching them for me is rick really does love what he's doing even though sometimes it feels like he's not present I mean, him and trevor they both seem like they're not I present to me sometimes. so much just um, chilling there sitting rocking out but, but if you when you when you it's like you know when you go in close though you can see in their face you know them thinking about it and getting into it and feeling it I think they're probably, I mean, I don't know. I've never heard them say it, but I, my interpretation of it is that they're into the music more than they are into the show, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think they're into, like, the performance as much and, like, the fans and everything else, but, like, which I actually appreciate more, really into what they're doing with the groove and the music. You know, or they might just be fucking daydreaming. With how patient they are, they have to be thinking about something else, right? Like, that's right. a testament to, like, just be able to hold that thought and that attention span for so fucking long. I was talking to Jordan from Spafford about that. And he was like, sometimes I'm thinking about, I need to pay the car payment, you know? <laughs> and um, I was telling him, I Reggie from the radiators drink. Everyone um, mm -hmm. told me once we asked him, we, we were on an elevator with him. We're like, what do you think about when you're on stage? He's like, how much I'm getting paid a note. Damn. Well, these guys <laughs> are getting paid a fuck ton per note. Um, I guess it's right. math. You got to keep a running tally in your head, you know. We ain't flew through that set. I mean, we, uh, we got crazy stuff going on tomorrow. All sorts of shit. So for everyone watching here, you're all more probably interested in the goose stuff. So we'll be back 15 minutes after Encore. Greg Knight will be joining me for the last two nights of this run um greg is a close friend of mine and of the band and i think it's going to be really interesting to have his perspectives on these after shows i'm looking forward to talking to him i haven't talked to him in a bit you know extended so uh tune in 50 minutes after encore it might light up during set break or afterwards or if you rather uh watch fish kevin t will be doing the wook club tomorrow night at 10 what is it? It's Meriwether 20... Meriwether 9, 17, 2000, yeah. And it yeah. probably will be close to when the set break was. I'm going to listen to the Meriwether show during the day, so if it's during set break, I might pop in and give you a, a couple minutes of my takes, but or maybe not. Fantastic, you uh, fantastic run with uh, Dog Log. There's a great uh, theme from the bottom into Dog Log. Two weird-ass songs, one of the best transitions. That's something else I wanted to say. Rick and and company really have the transition thing down where fish doesn't sometimes it's the yeah. patience like you were saying but Rick allows the band to catch up sometimes you know Which I think I think it's attention span and focus I feel like Trey's a little ADD about that shit he's like let's go and he just Rick's like fuck it we're just gonna sit here for I don't care 15 minutes whatever long it takes <laughs> Trevor you want to just sit there and pluck just fucking go it's fine yep Oh man, our chat's trolling too, riding hard. That's good. All, All right. right, and then what, did you tell them about Wednesday oh. too? Yeah, sorry, man. There's a lot going on. Uh, Wednesday night again, we have Goose, but then we also have Live at nine. That'll be T and Kev because I will be mm -hmm. watching Goose. 
Um, but tune in for that. That'll be fun. Uh, and then also, I guess, follow us on Twitter or X at Wook Plus. We are wrapping up the fish bracket. Right now sure. is the Elite Eight. Uh, so it'll be done in the next couple of days. You don't want to miss that. Uh, right. Sphere's coming up next week and on Sunday's 10 a.m. Yeah, man, we're busy. Oh, and the Wookiee Awards we're, are coming up. Oh, well, and the Wookiees, 424. 24. 424, 24. Yeah. 24. I, yeah, dude, I'm not going to lie. I'm I'm pretty damn sold at this point. I'm, I'm sold enough. I'm comfortable enough now to be critical, right? Like, there was a phase where I was like, I didn't know it well enough and I wasn't sold enough to be like to distinguish. Oh, I really like this. I don't like that. And like now I'm now I feel like I'm digging in and I'm I'm finding which aspects I really like and which aspects I'm like, yeah, I could do without that. No, I'm pretty sold at this point. Yeah. All right. I wish I wish they had have taken one of the interludes and did that for the 20 minute jam tonight. <laughs> which which is your favorite interlude? Uh, I think the second one, the one before Jive won. Yeah. I'm a, I, um, I'm a three fan, I think. I'm really I not. It, it, everything else aside, it's Rick's voice. It's like me and the guy and JB from Widespread. I just, the voice just doesn't work for me. And you know I'm a lyrics guy, so that's what I'm hearing, you know? I can't just tune it out. It's weird because his voice is fucking pretty decent that you know it's what i mean too, like he, he hits everything yeah. there, there's something to be said for dirty notes and not always being on right it's for it's me too clean least. for you yes it's too clean yes choir boy yeah. and then you add the auditune on occasionally but i like i think there's musicianship in those decisions um i think the slow patient thing was consistent again um the Indian River, I, I didn't even really hear the interlude part. I mean, maybe that's my noviceness, but I, I got back on the same page with the Indian River. I was like, all right, now I know where we're at. And I don't know. I like it. I think it's, you know, another slow, patient buildup type of thing, but I was enjoying it. I think Jive really is where this set uh, just fucking launches off, but. Right, Indian River is a tough song, <clears throat> putting the interlude aside, to open a set with. Again, it's not, you know, as we've always talked about, when you open a set or start a show, you want the big rock and roll number. You want to get everybody's butts out of their seats and shaking, and th yeah. that's another more patient thing. But ultimately, that's what this album was for them. Moon Cabin, if you look back as, as an artifact of where they were in that moment, it, it they were trying to learn these things so this yeah. is an expression of that i don't know that i agree with that take in general and i think most of the time that's where i'm at i want to have that formula but i really kind of appreciated that on a weird monday night night two which is an odd situation for an island tour like shotgun tour on the day of the eclipse right with like that whole thing I I really it worked for me the the oddity of these choices and having it. So like I I'm not disagreeing with you, right? Like I don't want to say make it sound like I'm saying like oh that's a shit point. I think any other time I agree with you, but I this whole off kilter odd setup really worked and I think the reason it worked is and I'm going to jump ahead and we'll go back, but Rosewood on was phenomenal. The, the penultimate bars leading into the climax of Rosewood, that like weird, trippy, psychedelic, like melt thing, then had the huge climax all the way through, you know, with the, the end of the Jive Fact. That was just such a major release from this really long, because you could think of this entire show as a super, super patient, slow buildup leading up to the end of Rosewood on. And, and it worked phenomenally. So, I agree with you, but I think tonight I'm 100% okay with this structure, the way they did it tonight. Um, there you go. I, I I think that the interlude, too, I wish that had have been longer, and then the jive were... Oh, we have a jive me, back in the chat. That's awesome. Congrats. It, 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 um, was, for me, my favorite part of the set in and jive 
Jive Lee. I thought that so we're gonna go with all the jives, I guess. But really, uh, <laughs> the Jive Lee was fantastic with the keyboard. Peter chimed on that. Post yeah, user, the jam- yes. and the so where did the Wikipod come in? Is that part of Jive Lee? With the wicked, did you catch all that with no. the bass solos and the drum solo? The drum solo is fucking insane. Cotter is an absolute uh, machine. Yes. Oh, is your connection bad? No, not at all. All right, you got a little bit wop 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 at the end, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that where that I couldn't tell where that like fell in. Maybe someone could fill me in, but. The jamming and the end of those two were really fantastic. Yeah, th- yeah, that drum solo was fucking so crazy. He honestly, all right, I'm gonna say stupid shit that I'm gonna regret. I don't think I don't think he surpasses Fishman. Like I'm not gonna put that on the table, but I don't think I appreciated or realized how good of a drummer he was. Even when I thought he was way better than Ben and like was fucking, you know standing hard for him like last week or during the chateau sessions you know like you and i talked about it. i was like oh he's a great drummer he's a great drummer tonight he kind of stepped up like you know 10 notches mm-hmm. from where he was i was like holy fuck yeah he does right. emulate fishman a lot brian he he has a lot of his a lot of the things that i love about fish i see in codder and he does it in a very respectful and solid way um and I, who knows maybe <laughs> Maybe he is that good. Maybe there's more to come and we just haven't seen it yet. You he, know, maybe he, that was his nerves. He looks like Levon Helm. Yeah. He looks like <laughs> Levon Helm could have been his dad and he plays like him. If you go back and watch the last Walt and Waltz and watch Cotter tonight, he looks like he has the same elbows, faces and things. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 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 Um, he's really good. So I guess Rosewood is going to be the one. Well, either Rosewood or Mist, I guess, is going to be the jam of the year. I saw you tweeted about why is everything jam of the year? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I caught like four J- Jody's Jotties today and three goats, and I'm digging it. Why not? Fuck it. I, the the explanations that I were getting, I was getting on that. You know, I was. Con- Gen- genuinely interested, like earnestly wanted to know like why everything is jam of the year. And it's like inside joke, half troll, half legit. Um, but, uh, you know, good. Appreciate it. Live in the moment. I've always thought that the best show I've ever seen was the last show I saw. Right. And like, I maintain that even when they're not the greatest. So I like that mentality, even if it's not the reality of it. Um, I for me, the end of Rosewood, I, and I wanted to distinguish it because the beginning of it, uh, when it was like a very, very slow build over the two chords back and forth, it, it was a little mundane to me. Like we had already done that jam five times tonight. And I, I, I you know, I don't want to be hypercritical, but like there was a part during Rosewood where I was just like, I can't listen to this for another 20 minutes. Like they've been doing this all night. Na- but where they delivered, it was like the punchline that made it all make sense. If they hadn't delivered the build up into that climax, then the 15, however long leading up to it would have been too tedious. But since they delivered on it, I think, uh, why is Jeff? I think it's obvious, T Hall, why Jeff's not an MVP. He has, a t- he has that kit now. It's a tiny kit, I'm, it's like a starter kit. Yeah, I mean, he has the hi hat and the kick and the snare. I don't know. I like, I tell you why I like the Rosewood heart. And I I thought that I I was really digging when they got quiet, they did the whole morning do thing where they completely brought it down and then rebuilt it up again from scratch. Is that when Jeff was all like hitting the wind chimes and being all goofy and shit? Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I I like that. I mean, that's what the, the brilliance of morning do was. That it yeah, no, I liked that part of it. No, that was fun. But the rest of it was the same thing, and it's the album. It's what they learned at this point. All those songs contain that kind of same jam. Like if you, if Fish decided to play all of, you know, Rift or something, they would all have a. Right, they all have that same Rifty jam. Right. Yeah, no, that's a good point, right? Like the like, and it's actually kind of awesome that they were able to break away from it enough towards the end to give it that you know satisfying conclusion because it definitely had a moon cabin 
there is a moon cabin kind of jam, right? There's a vibe to that kind of jam, I think. Oh, I forgot. I feel like we're learning all of this like live on the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta bring back the props. Bring back moon cabin. Well, all I appreciate right. everybody watching and letting us figure this shit out <laughs> together in front of you. It's interesting. Yeah, we're doing good. I, do you I'm think enjoying it. you think the interludes might pop back up again sometime? Yeah, well, it, it seemed like one had only been played once before, and two and three had never been played live. You know, uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't really see. I. I don't think they're distinguishable enough on their own. I think they work in the context of playing the album in between the songs. But I think if it were random, randomly thrown in, I don't know that it makes any sense. I, I think. I think you pull interlude two out, and it becomes like a "what's the use" kind of thing. I wish the names weren't so fucking confusing, but. Like everything, there's like five versions. But I mean, I guess that's the same thing as like tube and first tube and last tube and, you know. But Whatever Pages tube was. Yeah. yeah. Page, <laughs> fresh <laughs> tube or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They never uh, wanted to play with Pages tube, though. Yeah. God, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go actually go back and re-listen to the end of this show. I think Rosewood On is, I'm really impressed with that fucking uh, well, Jay's telling us that we are getting them. We just aren't getting them in the set list. Thank you, Jay. Uh, thanks, Jay. I appreciate it. So Jive Lee is a rocker. I mean, the keyboard. Uh, my man was sitting down. He had to stand up because he was getting down so hard. I know. And he tuned it up. Well, you're, we're in, you're talking about during hot tea, right? I'm talking about uh, Jive Lee. But oh, yeah, hot tea too. He did yeah. it during hot tea too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I think was he was the MVP of the end. You know, it's weird because I knew what they were going to do after a certain point, but it was kind of cool because I knew all the songs already. So I knew I wasn't going to be listening. You, you know, when you listen, to, hear a song, a, a newer song, even if you've heard it once or twice, you pay attention more. You you don't you can't get lost in it because you're trying to figure it out. Yeah, that's how I feel about all of this, though. It's all new. <laughs> right. I've right? seen them a few times. Like I no, said, I have we'll two, go. but I don't know. They have they have some to be announced dates. In case you in case you didn't real know during set break, they uh, show the dates over, oh, yeah, over, and over, over, over and over and over and over, over but. I'm hoping Merryweather or something pops. I don't know what the festival is or why those are blocked out now, but it's got to have something to do with some festival. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this is I true, love their Andrew. tour, though. I think it's great that they're playing these big sheds now. Right? I wasn't, right. like, coming back after Hampton, and it was like, that was a big step up, you know, in last year, and now it's like, the man and I was like, oh, that's a decent size shed. But then when they announced, what was it, the September one with Holmdale, like PNC, that's a mm -hmm. big shed. Spack, they're playing at the big stage, and they got a lot Ting of Pavilion. Wolf Brothers played Ting Pavilion last year. Yeah, it's pretty um, sick, man. They made all the right. jump. They they've made the jump. We'll see with all those dates. So that was a lot of dates to scroll through. <laughs> you know, are are you spreading yourselves thin? No, the fuck you would never say that about like another band. That's they're grinding well, out. They're, I feel like Goose is at a place where they don't have to tour that much, where they don't have to play. I all don't those. think it's too many dates, and if anything, I think it's going to benefit benefit them hugely. I think Fox Theater three nights. That's interesting. I don't understand the negative. The, the how that could be a negative, though. I think playing. Music together is only going to make no. I, I'm just, I'm just, just pontificating. <laughs> All right, right. I'm just disagreeing with you. <laughs> just pontificating. All right. Uh, I think we're good. Did you want to say anything else? It's Goose one point oh. Goose does sick. not get any point oh's. Yeah, hot tea is fun. Yeah, fucking love it. Super funky dance groove. It really hey, is. Thanks, a dance everybody. Game. You know, I actually I will say that too because all the Ben the Ben stands were saying how they were worried about Cot and his ability to hit the dance grooves, right? Because in the chateau and the auditions, all of his playing was very flourished and like jam driven. 
And when it comes down to it, Goose is a dance band, similar like to how Fish is. And I think he maintained those moments and those grooves really well. You know, and that's not my, you know, necessarily my cup of tea. So maybe somebody who's like really into it could be like, no, these dance. He has sucks. that little. He has the little electronic pad there. They could go into some EDM. He got it, man, he has the touch. He has the feel. He knows what he's doing. Everything's good. Who? <laughs> the best right. band in the land changes for me from day to day. Tim, don't don't take that. He's setting you up. <laughs> he's gonna. Thank he's you, Radio. You Gorilla Toss is the best band in the land. Oh, is that who it is? All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you hanging out with us. Hey, if you're watching us afterwards, let us know in the comments what you thought about tonight's show. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.